Hello, Hello and welcome to the fourth part of the drum recording workshop. Have fun. This is the Sennheiser MD421 with a music and speed switch. Speech switches the internal low cut on, music switches the internal low cut off, which leads to the proximity effect. We'll demonstrate that in a minute and leave the switch set to speech. The angle of the mic plays an important role when recording the toms, just as you have already seen with the snare drum. A steep angle leads to more attack and a flat angle sounds voluminous and roomy. Usually you record the toms from the top, but sometimes you will have toms without the resonant head. And then you could put a microphone inside of the tom. You could also record the tom the same way you recorded the snare drum with one mic on the top and one mic at the bottom. This time we decided on using only one microphone, the Sennheiser MD421. Now let's have a listen with the switch turned to speech. And now with the proximity effect, with the switch turned to the position music. I think that was perspicuous. Beware of the off axis as well in order to blend out the cymbals or other instruments. We'll therefore slightly turn the microphone in that direction. And have a listen. Okay, you will have to check the crosstalk of the right cymbals later in that position. Okay, let's go and record the bass drum. Inside of the bass drum you can see the AKG D112, set up directly in front of the beta. Usually you record the bass drum with two microphones. I'll show you the other microphone in a moment. The kick-in microphone can either be set up in front of the beta to have a lot of attack or in a distance for more volume and depth. In front of the beta you'll get a punchy attack with lots of high frequencies. And if you put it beside the beta in direction of the drum edge, you will get a warm attack. If the bass drum head isn't open or hasn't got a hole in the front, you can also record the bass drum head from the outside, for example from here, next to the beta. This is how it sounds in front of the beta. Now we'll move the microphone backwards a little bit, still in front of the beta. Okay. And now directed at the edge. I hope you were able to hear these three different positions. Let's now take a look at the other side of the bass drum and set up the second microphone. We've got the Neumann TLM 170i. Before we set it up, we have to make some adjustments. This here is the minus 10 dB pad switch, with which the microphone has 150 dBs maximum sound pressure level, so the microphone won't break. We have chosen the polar pattern calliode and haven't switched on the low cut. Now we'll set up the microphone and have a listen to what it sounds like. It's important that you don't put the microphone directly in front of the hole of the bass drum head because there's a very high sound pressure level and lots of air which can destroy the microphone diaphragm. Okay, let's listen to that now. Now with a small distance, a bigger distance. As you can hear, the pressure gets less the farther it is positioned. And therefore we'll position it pretty close, like this. We could build a tube with a length of 2 meters to 2 meters and 50 with gobos and carpets and place the microphone at the end of the tunnel to get lots of sub bass. You have to then experiment with the position of the microphone inside the tube. This tube or tunnel can be built with chairs and heavy blankets or with three gobos, two at the sides and one at the top. Okay, 
Let's now deal with the miking of the right symbol. We will use the Neumann KM84, just like for the hi-hat. Here, also beware of placing the microphone too close to the right symbol, because otherwise you might have to deal with the proximity effect. You could also use a high-quality dynamic microphone like the Sennheiser MD441 instead of using a condenser microphone. I've seen that lots of times with cymbals, especially at live shows, but also in studios. Again, I'll show you the different positions of the microphone. Could you please play the right symbol, Nicolas? I hope you were able to hear that properly. I now turn the microphone slightly to use a natural off axis and point it to the edge of the cymbals for a brilliant sound. I think we could place it a little bit higher. Like this. All right, now there are only the overheads and ambient microphones left. This is our overhead microphone setup. It's a wide AB microphone setup consisting of two Neumann KM184s, which are small diaphragm condenser microphones. Of course, we could have set up an XY or MS setup, which would have a very good mono compatibility, but it would not have as good a stereo imaging as this runtime method, the wide AB setup. It's very important that you pay attention to the microphone positions and pan them to the right sides. This is usually the audience's point of view. As you see, we've got the Tom microphones on the right and left hand side, hi-hat and right microphones on the left and right hand side. So you have to pay attention to panning them and the overheads to the same directions. Okay, let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. Are you feeling alright, are you drum kit? Is everything in the right position? That means you're not disturbed by anything and you're able to play very easily. Okay, then let's take a look at the ambient microphones. We have built up a stereo microphone setup. It's up here. That's a small AB setup with two omnidirectional microphones, the Brühl and Kier 4009. We'll take advantage of the room height, and I chose this setup especially because I know that it sounds great in this room, and I've had a lot of good experience with it. Let's have a listen. Nicolas, could you play for us? <laughs> 